Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the NJ Multispecies Podcast. I am Joe Santiago, and as usual, my partner, Chris Pereira. Uh, tonight's guest, Mikey K. Uh, he taught me how to say it today the right way for the first time ever. Forgot it right. Uh, cola, how do you say it? Cola Joe. So after he taught you, you still fucked it up? I could look the text up. Mike Colija. Mikey Topaz, bro. That's what everyone calls him. Mikey I, just call him Mark, I just call him Mikey K. Mikey K, guide service. He's coming on. He's going to talk about the Grand Slam tournament. Um, I thought that was pretty big news, and apparently he's texting me he's going to release, release even much bigger news than that tournament. I have no idea what that is. He also says he's going to have a, a tackle giveaway. I have no idea exactly what that item is, so we'll have him in here soon. A few things to get through. Uh, first, I do have some news. Um, Joe Bergen uh, has fallen. He's been defeated by uh, our own Dwayne Chapman. The Squatch uh, pulled a small mouth out, knocked Joe Bergen off the board, it cost me a fortune. Uh, I had to pay the bounty in, in Big Buck Bates bundle. Dwayne, of course, it's customized that bundle, so it cost me more than it was supposed to. Did so it? The pod, yeah, the pod, he, he put glow stuff, and he added scents for his Lake George trip, so it came out to way more than what it is. So the podcast is bankrupt. The bounty on Pastorino and Gabarini's canceled because I can't afford to buy this shit anymore for now uh but yeah bergen is down to just the panfish slam so he rules the skillful angler uh board just on panfish which is quite pathetic but it's still something wait he he's he's still on there more than anyone else with just two fish or he has three all three panfish he has all three and i think all three of them are pretty tough to beat the only one i think we could snipe is the uh Sunfish, the crappy, seems unbeatable almost, and the yellow perch seems unbeatable. Unless we get a December ice fishing. But yeah, Joe Bergen's on the verge of death. Uh, we're chasing him onto the salt water now. We're chasing salmon. We're, we're, we're attacking him from all directions, and he's just, he's done. Even Katie from Lake Apacon and Ed Hutter are helping us kill him. So he started out legendary, but he's finishing weak. Uh, we don't even have time to talk about them anymore. But we don't have time to talk about them anymore. One fish, like the hoverboard fisherman, and the, it's just ridiculous. Well, you, you uh, did have you had you had two two updates that I'm seeing on on the board as well. Just real quick, you got uh, Sandy Kennedy put up a real nice bow fin, 25 and three quarter inches. I saw that South, South Jersey. Saw the picture on that. I think she put it up on the Mayhem page. I was talking to her on Instagram about doing an interview with her, and her Instagram tag is like Jersey Fisher Gal or something like that. So I didn't even know it was her. And you I did? said, I had no idea. No, because the tag wasn't Sandy Kennedy. And I was talking to her, you want to come on the podcast? And then, like, she said, Yeah, my name's Sandy. I said, Oh, are you Sandy Kennedy? I'm like, Oh, okay. We already have you planned to come on. The Never mind. I'm just talking to the wrong person. But uh, in other news... I'm not going. I said two. Two what? Oh, you're I not. two okay. updates on the skillful angler board that you were just going to blow through. They okay. fixed the striped bass. They moved it down to the saltwater category that we were talking about the other day, remember? That's a 51-inch fish? Correct. They had it on the fresh it. water. I wonder if they moved it because of us. I don't. Does anyone watch this? I, I, I don't even know. Uh, it, doesn't, mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, so I, fit, I, I got to fish Friday with my with Squatch. We had a really, uh, not Friday, Saturday. I got to fish with Squatch. Had a really good trip uh, on a Jersey deep lake at a Mihar. Very, uh, very deep Jersey lake. It has salmon and largemouth bass in it. Uh, I will not name it. I refuse to. We did very well, though. Uh, I landed four salmon and I think three bass, and I think Dwayne had the exact opposite, like three bass and four salmon. Nice size fish. 
still in fairly shallow depths, good action all day. Fishing is still very good. It seems like it hasn't totally transferred to summer yet. It's still in late spring fishing mode. Well, that was which uh, day was that? That was sat that was Saturday, and then the rest of the weekend I didn't fish and I went golfing. Uh, so that's all I have. We all we all saw that. Yeah. Yes. Now you went to New York. It looks like I I mean that trip you and Katie went on that looks like it was just not even describable. I mean, yeah, it was. I mean, we start we started off. We we went out with. Uh, she she got me this as a it was a birthday surprise. I didn't know till a couple of days ahead of time. Uh, she she booked us to go fishing with uh, Kurt Hofig. That's a hell of a birthday gift. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice surprise. No, I'm, I mean, you know, I, I've talked to Kurt for many years. Uh, we never, we, we, we actually had to think about it when, when we, we were met at the boat ramp, and shook hands. I was like, I don't think we've ever fished together, right? He's like, no, nah, I don't think so. Um, I, we, we almost did a couple of times. I know we, we planned, and I'm talking, I'm talking maybe seven, eight years ago, maybe something like that. It was a while ago when he was still in New Jersey and we were going to go night fishing and something like that. And it just never worked out. And, and we, yeah, we had never fished together and, uh, went out there. And, and what's cool is that he kind of learned what at the start of what he's doing up there. He, he started doing here, you know, he started jigging lake trout here in New Jersey and kind of took it up there. And, and now he's, just slamming lake jigging lake trout up there on on Cayuga Lake and uh I mean the experience was insane I mean he he ruined New Jersey lake trout jigging for me basically I probably won't go for our, the rest of the summer let me ask you a question now when I first met you you had had the reputation you you had earned the nickname of the wizard of Merrill Creek you were fairly wow. You, that's what people called you before I even knew what your name was. They one person. No, nah, it was a thing that went around. I heard it, the Wizard of Merrill Creek, whatever. So you were considered a fairly well-known person for jigging Merrill Creek. Like, that's what people knew you for. So how did your, how did what your uh, methods, how, how were your methods in New Jersey compared to what he did up there? So real similar. I mean, we got to, we were obviously, we talked about this while we were fishing and uh, he kind of asked me like, how did, how did you figure this out? Cause like we didn't talk to each other about jigging lake trout, even when we talked over the last bunch of years, never talked about stuff like that. And he just kind of was curious. He's like, well, how did, how did you, how'd you figure this stuff out? And I told him my story and he told me his story. We basically both figured it out the same way by accident. Like you're just, you're fishing. It's not working. You get pissed off and you're like, and then you like, you're reeling the lure in to, to try something else. And all of a sudden you get hit and you realize that like, uh, these, these fish just get really like to get really pissed off at that you're you're not feeding them bait you're you're pissing them off yeah they get aggressive with it yeah and uh and then sometimes you hook a state record salmon and think it's a lake trout and just lose it at the rail of the boat i've only seen that done once by uh, yeah unfortunately i've seen it done once myself yeah you saw it a little closer than i saw it mm. um but uh yeah so i mean Kurt's going to come on the show and, and talk about, you know, what he does and what he did in New Jersey. And like, he loves talking to New Jersey fishing. This is where he learned to fish. And, uh, so he's, we're, we're going to get him on a future episode and we can talk more in depth about lake trout fishing and, and whatnot. Uh, I'll save it for that. I'm not going to get. In. Yeah. Save it for that. Hopefully he'll take me fishing too. When he comes on. Yeah. Maybe. Um, uh, other news real quick before we bring Mike in. The Eddie Mac and Life Spins Friday that gives you this is two, you, have, you have one more day. You have till tomorrow night at seven uh, eight p.m. I'm going to go live and spin the wheel. Go on episode fifteen and subscribe and like Eddie Mackin's fishing rips, slipping trips, 
uh, I got that totally wrong, but you'll yeah, find. Do you want? Do you want me to do this? Eddie Mackin's ripping lips, fishing trips. Like that Facebook page. Subscribe to this channel, and leave a comment. You're in raffle. It's a three hundred fifty dollar value for three people. Charter on Lake Pacon. Uh, you bear. You, you have to literally click on two things to enter the raffle. Yeah. Friday you're... night live, eight o'clock. I'm going live. Uh, and I'm not going live from Facebook this time. I'm going live from YouTube. So I yeah. will go. I will go live on YouTube. So if you're a subscriber, you'll automatically get a um, notification when I go live. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, I'm also going to share a link to the live feed on Facebook. So you slackers could get in too. Yeah, but if you're not a subscriber and you win, you're disqualified immediately. Yeah, they might not be on the wheel. They might just come in to watch because they're just bored and weird. You know, it right. might just be who knows. I, yeah, like John, uh, like, who knows? Uh, John, just, just to clear up one thing, that to enter you have to leave a comment on episode fifteen, not this episode. Episode mm -hmm. fifteen, yeah. the Eddie Mac and episode. Yep, that's where we're pulling the list from. Yep. Um, yep. real quick after Mikey K, we're gonna have Glevin, uh, Kevin Glenn come in real fast to just explain how we're gonna try to build teams to attack this tournament. Uh, we're gonna build team mayhem. We, uh, uh, my boat's in. Chris boat's in. Kevin's boat's in. We have Max. We have Ed Hutter. We have uh, John Voits picking up the kayak army. We have shore fishermen. Uh, team mayhem. Kevin Glenn's gonna explain how we're gonna build this out. What species? Who's gonna go for? We're gonna strategize, uh, strategize this a little bit. Uh, uh, can we get Mikey in here now? Uh, we can try to get Mikey in here now. Let's go. Yeah, let's go for it. I got to get the glass break better. All right. So our next guest has been fishing New Jersey his entire life, freshwater and saltwater. He is the owner of Mike K's Guide Service. And he is the tournament director of Round Valley and also the head honcho, basically, of the Grand Slam tournament. We have Mike Cola J. How's it going, guys? Did he say it right? He said it right. I got it. Because he screwed it up early on <laughs> on the podcast. He got it. You I did, too. Want... So did you. I didn't even attempt to say it. I just said, that's my, I only know him as my buddy Mikey K. <laughs> Okay, Mike K, we have a lot to get right into with you, so we're not here all night. We have the guide service to talk about, but of course, everyone's waiting to hear the specific details with this tournament. Let's start from the very beginning. What is the one and only way to enter, and how do you get in? So you have to enter in person. It's at the Sport and Life. You have to enter there. Uh, Scotty, Bob. Chris or Ryan, they'll walk you through it. Um, you sign up there, you'll get a raffle ticket. It's $40 for members, $45 for non-members. Um, so now, so you cannot enter the day of the contest at the contest? You can enter the contest up until the contest starts at 4 p.m. that Friday. So but you, you have there. to do it at the Sporting Life. At the Sporting Life, because you're going to get a raffle ticket that you must be present um, in order to win the raffle prizes at the end of the tournament, which you'll have to be present for. Okay, so Sunday, when the tournament, when you enter, you're going to receive basically a door prize raffle ticket. You're correct. When the tournament ends on Sunday is when they are going to raffle off all these prizes for everyone who entered. But if you're not there, you cannot win. Yeah, you must be present for the raffle ticket. So you have to be at the final weigh-in Sunday at the end, which is 4 p.m., and that's when the raffle is. So even if you just fish Friday night, you could still show up. And even if you fish just Friday night and catch nothing, you can still show up Sunday at 4 p.m. for your chance to win the raffles. Yep. Okay. And, and just just 
to drum up a little bit of excitement, I know you can't off the top of your head name every prize that's going to be raffled off, but do you want to just, just real quick, a couple of the cool prizes that you can win with All this right. raffle? So one of the cool prizes is a uh, ready to fish lead core combo that I spool up as we sell them at the shop comes with a warrior spoon. That's five colors of lead core and that's ready to fish tied with spoon on and you're good to go. It's probably $150 combo. So that's, I could, I could use that. That's nice. worth it right there. Right here. Um, we got Justin over at Justin Yanetta over at big buck baits. He gave us a bunch of assorted, you know, packs. So that's a nice little prize. Yeah, got cool. a bunch of warrior spoons assorted, so we're going to give them away as well. Uh, Lori was generous enough to give us a donation for a $50 gift card at Dow's. Nice. Awesome. We got uh, a couple nice little multi tools for the boat. Okay. We got a Shimano Nasky 1000. We're going to be giving that away. That's worth Damn. $40, $45 to get in right there. And then Warrior Spoon Company. Giving us four fifty dollar gift cards for Warrior Spoons, so that was oh, that's nice. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's, all right, just a few more I got laid out that I put on the table. We got some Sims hats. You know, everybody likes the Sims. Nice, nice. And then we made up about a dozen or so Round Valley shirts. So we're gonna we're gonna raffle them off as well. So there's a bunch. That's just some of it, but we got a bunch more. Some Vinci's. Even if you're a person that doesn't fish, it's almost worth it to yeah, buy a raffle ticket. <laughs> might be, if you know someone that fishes, you, you can enter the contest, maybe win some uh, Christmas gifts for someone that you know. <laughs> I would buy the $40 ticket just for a shot to win that lead core combo. That's it. I'm sure there's going to be guys signing up, just not even fishing, just signing up. But All right, yeah. so that's the, si that's the sign ups and the and the give and the door prizes. Now let's move on to the next thing, the species. We have four different species with three different finishers, which gives you a, a, a finish board of 15 people. Is that correct? Yes. And so these so these 15 people are all going to win some money, some money. And that's it, it's also based on the rules I got to put in here. It's based on you know how many guys we get signed up entry. Um, I believe it was yeah subject to change if 120 entrants are not registered. So that that'll change if we don't get 120 guys. Then you know guys for first and second might get paid out, and a guy in third it's not. You know, but that's based on 120 entrants. Which okay I, okay. I think so basically we, just just so you know. No one's complaining when it's all said and done because they didn't understand the rules. So you have it set up as a percentage, but it's based on at least 120 entries. Yeah. Which shouldn't be a problem. problem. Yeah, I'm bringing, I'm I'm bringing like 110 just with <laughs> me. Yeah. So apparently, apparently Joe has some kind of army that's strategizing different species and they're just going to go balls out on this <laughs> on this contest you're in it well yeah apparently i'm in it i have no idea what it is we're going to talk about it af after you got to bounce out of here before we log off but i guess i'm going to find out too but uh yeah we're 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 going to bring as many people as we can and we're going to okay all right before we get off course let's move to the next part of it now Breaking it all down slowly, so because it's very complex. Now, within the four species in the Grand Slam, some of them have to go to the way station, and other ones have to just be on the bunk board. Do you want to go into detail about the secret item and how we're gonna, how that works? All right. So, like you said, there's five divisions. Uh, basically. The trout are all going to be killed. Um, you're going to weigh them and measure them just as you would for the bass categories, which are all by length. Um, the trout, we're going to we're going to kill all the trout just because the water is going to be warm, and most likely they're not going to survive with the water being that warm anyway. So that's the only reason why we're going to weigh the fish in for the trout. Um, the bass, we're going to keep the smallmouth, largemouth, and hybrids. We're going to go by length. Um, you know, trying not to kill any 
unnecessary fish we don't have to so okay. that's so why just, we're... just to be clear with that so everyone's not in an uproar the reason that's being done is because they feel the release rate on the trout is not going to be successful so they'd rather you take the trout to eat them instead of wasting them. right the other fish that they know will survive your release they're going to the bunk board for yep the trout that's as well the trout are as well they're gonna get uh they're gonna get measured on the bump board also and then you have to you know put the mystery item into pictures and supply the the two pictures a selfie with you with the mystery item and the tower in the background and then the fish with the mystery item on the bump board to qualify how, now, do, you, how do you get the mystery item so the mystery item is going to be available on round valley trout association's facebook page um at noon the day before the tournament so you can go online you could print the mystery item out you're going to sign it because there's going to be a line on there that you're going to sign or print your name i'd rather probably guys print print their name um and then as well as the sport and life will have them on hand so you could stop there while you're getting bait before the tournament or you know run in there and grab it real quick and go but those are going to be the two ways to get the mystery item just uh on a side note, the bump boards will not be supplied. We had a pretty big turnout on a fall tournament at Round Valley this winter, and some guys were showing up and didn't have bump boards, and they were trying to use tape measures. And I had to, you know, deal with the situation and, and scrounge up some bump boards last minute for the guys that were wanting to fish. So just a heads up, anybody planning to fish this, make sure you have a bump board, and you know, because mouths on a fish got to be fully closed pressed all the way forward and if somebody's got a mouth open or you know trying to squeak a half an inch or whatever you know you're going to hear about it because guys are going to the way master's going to determine that so right all right so so to me this this is the most confusing part for people especially if they're new to this so now obviously a bump board is going to have a, a piece in the front that starts at zero where the where you can push the fish's nose up to and have its mouth closed and the tail is going to lay back on the measuring device right mm -hmm. if someone doesn't own one of these i'm i'm assuming the sporting life has them available for purchase a, a decent amount like if you have a run on if they have a run on the store over there for so and a dozen people need to buy bump boards they can they supply that so the sporting life currently does not carry bump boards we don't have them okay all right well i mean most i feel like most anglers have one somewhere i i have two i know somewhere in the garage i don't always bring them with me i usually just use the tape on the side of the boat but that's not gonna account for this contest i have to bring one of the bump boards correct? yeah physical bump board <clears throat> now okay so well, now Joe, when, no, Joe, you're not moving on yet. Hold on. This is a very <laughs> important part of the contest. That I was in the same play. part. I'm in uh, whatever. Look, I was going to say, would you tell me, Mike, is it okay? Can someone build a bump board out of a 90 degree angle of two pieces of wood, let's say, and they attach a measuring tape to it with the zero at the 90 degree angle? Is that okay? I'd rather not just because I am planning for this to be a pretty big tournament and pretty big turnout. Um, you know, and I don't want to deal with any guys with any kind of issues like that. But if you could buy I, a bump. I, I just, just I, buying a bump. Just buy yeah, a bump. What's the problem? I, I, they're you, not much. You know me. Um, I'm just playing devil's advocate for all the lazy <laughs> bastards out there. And I just I don't want people to not come and do this just because of a bump board. So I'm just asking. Well, if you don't want to buy a bunk board, then just go to our stay on Round Valley and trout fish. Then you don't need a bunk. Uh, do you, you do need one, right? Yeah, most most guys that fish, you know, any kind of tournament, most ninety percent of the guys out there have a bunk board. So yeah, get you know, a bunk board. It's not hard. It shouldn't be an issue. No, it, it's not. If you don't have one, you need one anyway. I'll I'll bring if I could find both of mine. I'll bring the extra one if someone you could just let someone borrow it. Maybe if anyone else who's listening. That's going to come to the tournament. If you have extra ones, maybe you just donate them for the day. 
just yeah. so someone in case someone 500 leaves. boats coming and and chris is bringing one extra bunk but thank you chris you've saved everyone uh, now what are the with the pictures i'm just saying there's going to be 500 boats if anyone needs a bunk board chris has one we're we're good hey, you know what if you can't afford to buy yourself a bunk board then you can share it with the other 499 people that need to borrow my bunk board. I, Listen, I wave a boat over that's like 40 yards away and use their bunk board. <laughs> I, I guess that's another option. But are, are you now going to ask about the photo with the tower? Because I wanted to clear that up too. That's exactly what I'm – now, no, because there's more fo- – you need a f- – now, the, 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 the trout has to go to the sporting life to get weighed in. Why does it need a picture on a bunk board? Just to verify that it was caught at one of the lakes. Well, so well, you're saying that's so the, the tower picture. picture. That's the not the bunk board picture. Yeah, the, we really don't need, but just in case, I'm, I'm gonna require just taking a late a length in case. Yeah, because okay, then it gets so too confusing, need- and guys are gonna be, do I need to measure this? Do I need to measure that? That it's just it's already confusing enough, I think. So I think so. If me and Chris are on Round Valley and we catch a lake trout, we take a picture on the bunk board, a picture of Chris holding the fish with the tower in the background, and then we take the fish to the sporting life to get weighed in for a trout. Yes, correct. Yep. That's, if, and that's for that's for a rainbow trout, brown trout, or lake trout. Any yes. trout. Okay. If we're on spruce run and we catch a hybrid, we take a picture of it on the bunk board very carefully with the mouth closed. Take a picture holding the fish with the tower dam on spruce run in the background, and then that fish can be released. Correct? Yeah, with, with the mystery item in both pictures. With yep. the mystery item. Forgot the mystery. Well, item. so. If I have to take a picture of a fish on Spruce Run with that in the background, what if I'm all the way down by the uh, power lines? All right. Unfortunately, you're going to have to keep the fish alive as best as you can, uh, whether you got to put it in a cooler, get in your car, drive back to, you know, in the park itself, and stand on the boat ramp with the tower in back of you to take a picture and qualify it that way. Uh, I really don't have a good answer for that, but that's that's – it's your call. I mean, I, I know it's a pain in the butt for the guys with the kayaks, but sorry. Well, I mean, I mean, it's not that much of a pain for the guys in kayaks that have motors on their kayaks or that, you know, trying to be little boats, right? Chris, I kind of feel like now you're one of the guys that was always complaining to me. No, I'm not fishing. The, and Dwayne's another one. No, I'm not fishing the tournaments. They're all cheating. They're all yeah. cheating. No, no, I didn't say everyone's cheating. I said it's too easy. It's too for- easy. But now this tournament has all these deterrents in it, and you seem annoyed with them. Like no, 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 I'm not annoyed with them. I actually, I can appreciate that they're putting these deterrents in. And I, I hope it doesn't, I hope the deterrents for cheating don't deter people from entering because, you know, that's what they're, these things are put in there to make the actual real competitors, the real anglers feel more comfortable doing this tournament, knowing that someone can't cheat as easily. It, you know what I mean? I agree. Right. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, it's a little bit extra work, but there's no other way to do it. Really. You have to put these deterrents in or else it's going to make, you know, I don't care what anyone says, you know, there's going to be some guys that are just scumbags, and they're going to try to cheat when there's money involved. That's yeah. just it. That's it. That's that's the world today. People, you know, people do crazy things for money. You know, just just like I know there was a couple comments that guys were talking about. Well, why don't you weigh the bass? You know, and I'm thinking, you know, first thing that comes to my head is everybody's seen the guys cheating with the the egg sinkers in the walleye the last you know month yeah. or so. Like, you know, how do how do I know that thing on on a scale? It, doesn't have an egg sinker in it you know that's why i'm going by length you know that's it's it's a crappy thing to say but you know again people do crazy things when there's money involved you know no dude i've seen not to get off on a tangent but i've done i, I did ice fishing contest a while back and some dude like stuffed snow into like the bass's mouth to like make it way more and he got caught and then the next year, they let him back in the contest. They're like, oh, he promises not to do it again. He learned his lesson. And, and, it's just like, and then you're just like, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this shit anymore. Yeah. 
And so you have to deter this stuff. And it's like anything else. You can lock your car. If someone really, really wants to break in, yeah, they can smash the window and they're still going to, you know, steal something, whatever. But if, if you lock your car, you're, you're cutting the chances back of that happening by probably 99%. Mm-hmm. Mike, you have any idea what the fuck he's talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? What do you mean? Uh, just forget it. So 4 p.m. on the 21st, 4 p.m. on the 21st, that's when this thing starts. You can go on to Round Valley. You can go on to the Round Valley swim area. Did it, can you even put a boat on that thing? I never no, on no, but you, can't boat. you fish it from shore. Yep. And you fish spruce run. So there's actually three bodies of water involved. Four, uh, 4 p.m. Friday, and then it ends 4 p.m. Sunday. Yep. So what is that? That's 48 straight hours. 20, 72. What is that, Chris? Do the math. 48 it's, a of, hours. it's a lot of time with no sleep for a lot of guys. It's 48 hours. Yeah, well, again, just to be clear, you don't have to fish every waking hour of this thing. You can pick and choose. That's what's cool. You can pick and choose your times throughout the. Do you think day. Andy? Do you think Andy still can fish the whole forty-eight hours on one block of Elvita cheese? Dude, Andy still can't even fish thirty minutes of this episode without getting up to take a piss. <laughs> All right, so the tournament. We have under control. We, we, I think we get it. Uh, most people should. If you don't, you probably shouldn't be even driving a vehicle. So. <laughs> well, I mean, look, if you're interested in it and you still have questions, ask them on the Mayhem page. Ask them to Mikey K. Go on Mikey K's page. Ask them. Someone's going to answer you. Yeah. Or and ask when you go when to you, sign up. When you, go, when you go to the Sporting Life to sign up, do you get a copy of the rules? So the the rules are there. Just ask Scotty from you know. Say hey, I want a I want a copy of the rules, you know. And he's got they're printed out, you know. Take them. There's flyers there that with with all the details and stuff, you know. But they're they're there. They're available. Yeah. You know? it, it sounds pretty straightforward to me. As well. it's just there is some extra stuff in there to deter cheating, which has to be done. It's gonna. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the contest. I haven't done a contest in years. I'm gonna do this contest because. They deterred enough of the cheating in my mind, and I, I think it's going to be fun and it's going to be fair. Listen, if anyone's on Spruce Run in a kayak, if you catch a nice fish, send me a Facebook message, and I'll drag your ass over <laughs> to the tower. Like, I don't even care. Like, give me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something. I'll drag you over there, take a picture, and leave you there to die. That's it. You stay there. Why don't you, uh, why don't you just let John Voigt drag him over with his motorized kayak? Is his kayak his kayak better not be motorized? It Are is. You serious? It better not be. <laughs> it one hundred percent is. He's crying about all this shit, and he has a motor. Yes, he has a motor. Oh my god! What's he? What's the problem then? He just doesn't. He doesn't. He, he he's gonna do it. He just didn't want to be bothered with it. I don't know. I thought he was upset about pet paddling. All right, never. We moving on. That's the tournament. Now, Mike K's guide service. Now, a lot of the things that we've been looking at, most of the guides we've interviewed, they kind of are on, like, the same, like, wavelength, uh, doing kind of the same things. Uh, You're the first one on the show that kind of, like, does more of a variety of pretty much anything someone asks for, uh, except saltwater you do not do. You're all fresh. Mm Mm-hmm. But you have a drift boat, you have boats for the lakes, you have a variety of all different kinds of shit that most people do not have. Yep. So so now, well, we're going to get to that drift boat in a little bit because that thing's freaking awesome. <laughs> but um, so the, the main thing, you, which lakes do you guide on? It's not, it, it's not just any lake that someone wants to fish, is it? No, but most of them in New Jersey, you know, the local reservoirs and streams. I do stream trips, you know, fly fishing mm-hmm. lessons. Got the drift boats, so we could do some drift boat trips. Uh, if you're looking just for normal, regular fishing lessons, I do them. But uh, mostly Round Valley, Spruce Run, Lake Apacong, Merrill Creek, uh, Aeroflex, 
Greenwood Lake, just about all over. And it just really depends on what, what that angler is looking to do and catch, you know, and I'll what do my best to cater them. What if somebody called you and they were like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I live on the Ramapo River and I, I really want to learn how to fish it. Like, would you would you cater to that? Absolutely. So that's cool. So you could you could actually have them come teach you your own home water. Yep. And so. Then, oh, sorry. Okay. I mean, I know you fished all over the state. You, you're you're comfortable with most places in the state some like joe said someone hits you up with uh you know this river is down the street from me more than likely you probably fished it at some point and even if you didn't the tactics that you use in other places that you know they can be adapted to to wherever yep look look yeah, at I, us I, a couple a couple of weeks ago you know we took the, the same techniques and you know methods we do at round valley we went up to seneca lake you know, me and a bunch of the guys from Round Valley, and you know, we all, we all, all, all the boats that went up there, we we all did really, really good. You know. Yeah, We're I think all, we talked about it like three episodes already, and the guy yeah. from New York, we've just been rubbing the salt in there for like. <laughs> That's three it. Weeks. We don't want. It. We're, we're done. We're, <laughs> you, you wipe the floor with them. And it's it's no big deal. Yeah. I tried, I tried to have my wife book a lake trout trip with him like three months ago, but he saw the last name on her, I guess, and knew it was me, and he denied the trip. <laughs> I, just, I tried to have my wife book a lake trout trip on his boat so I could get on there and see exactly what he's doing, but he, he realized it was me, so he turned the trip down. But I tried. My wife I was going to try to sneak on there. But That's a, uh, that's a made-up story. Yeah, but 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 listen, guys. I mean, all jokes aside, seriously. Like, you know, when we're out in the streams fishing, you know, for trout and, and whatnot, you know, it's it's all about reading the water and you know water temperature and the conditions. And but you know, that's that's more what I enjoy teaching somebody is is teaching them how to read the water and where fish are likely to hold and why. You know, that for me, that's that's the rewarding part. You know, the fish is just an added bonus you do and mostly fly fishing in the river or, uh spin fly and spin both yep that's cool and and so i just i just want to say um i don't want to say a lot of your trips but one of your main specialties is trolling um and the guys that fish lake opakong you know, is trolling on lake opakong other than for muskies isn't really that huge of a thing so someone looking for a trolling trip they're, they're going to reach out to you like yeah. me like me well yeah but he's not going to turn most people down <laughs> joe needs about seven or eight more rods and then he'll be all right i need four more foot of boat to fit those <laughs> rods how, how many rods do you troll maximum uh most of the time it's 12 i do put 14 i've had 16 out but Jeez. like 12 to 14 is what i fish comfortably and alone too like yeah. me and you and mark mercer were like out there with 10 rods in chaos he i've seen him run 14 <laughs> by himself looking at me like what the hell are all them guys doing there dude He's by himself I've done five rods on my boat, and I want to rip the rod holders off and throw them in the fucking water and go home. Like I'm just tangling shit up, and I don't know how they do it. They do. They most of them do it by themselves somehow. That's it. Big, big, wide turns. <laughs> yeah, I. I mean, you you can't beat the efficiency. If if you're out there to catch fish and to find fish, I mean, you you can't beat the efficiency of of a good trolling spread. Mike, are you fishing in the tournament? I'll be fishing this one. I sat out the last couple, so Ooh, I'm, getting, I'm getting in on this one. Mikey K is in it, but Yannette is not, right? He's out. Yannette is on the fence. I'm still looking for Waymasters. So. Well, so, uh, yeah, obviously, the person, whoever's in charge of the weighing and, and the measuring pictures and stuff, they're not going to be in the contest. They're not going to be competing. Yeah. Who, where, and they'll be sitting in the parking lot at the Sporting Life? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. We'll have the leaderboard there. It's it's huge. It's it's a pretty nice leaderboard. Me and Matt, you know, been working on it, put it together. But uh, 
it's all labeled out it's 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 pretty sick and once once you see the size of this leaderboard you're gonna you're gonna know that this this is no joke tournament it's pretty pretty gonna be pretty awesome oh yeah now is there if you're not, if you guys didn't plan on doing this i think you probably should is someone going to take pictures of the leaderboard periodically and like update it on the facebook page or something yeah round valley we're gonna we're gonna i'll make sure whoever you know updated status of the current leaders cool all right yeah so, cool. yeah, so once you see my 15 pound hybrid go up <laughs> everyone could just go home i'll what? save you the I'm gonna I'll, I'll, Friday night. I'll put up like a, a nine pound rainbow, and then Saturday morning, like a fourteen pound hybrid. Everyone else just leave. Oh, I'm gonna cut all your fish open. <laughs> it's on a bunk board. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be watching you. Kevin Glenn ordered a custom bunk board from China that makes a whole inch look like a half inch. <laughs> oh, out of here. No such thing. No, there isn't. But he wishes there was. So, Mike, what do if somebody wanted to go on a fishing trip with you, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, what's the best way to contact you? So the best way and fastest is my cell phone. Uh, you know, 908-642-5423. Um, but, you know, shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram, and I'll, I'll see it. And, uh, and what, what are your Facebook and Instagrams? So it's Mike K Guide Service. On both. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I just did a Google search. I just typed in Mike K Guide Service, just a regular Google search, and both the Instagram and the Facebook page both pop up at the top, so it's not hard to find. Yep. All right. Well, Mike, now's your now's your time. You said you had something big you wanted to announce or – Whatever. What do you got for us? So real quick, while we're on the tournament thing, um, I just want to throw out there, we will be having another pretty big tournament. Uh, it'll be similar to the ones we've had in the past, but it's going to be a hybrid tournament at Spruce Run. Probably have the way station there at the boat ramp. Um, it's most likely going to be two fish combined weight. You can uh, roll, up, yes. roll up, weigh your fish in. And then release the fish. This, uh, this is the best one. So we're going to have that. That's going to be in memory of George Pilar, which was a longtime RVTA member. Did a lot to the club and everything. And his daughter uh, reached out to me asking me if we could put something together in memory of her father. So that's going to be in memory of George Pilar. So um, that's going to be in August at Spruce. All right. Here's the big news. Which well, hold on. Is, is that tournament that tournament's just a one day? You said or two days? That's going to be a weekend long thing. I haven't set okay. a date with that yet. Oh, okay. Rules, okay. But but that's that's in the works. All right. Also in the works, which I'm going to be bringing to the board at the next meeting, is we're looking to have possibly the biggest tournament New Jersey's ever seen. I'm going to do. Bigger than this one that's going to happen next? Bigger than this. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking you can fish Hapakong, Spruce Run, Round Valley, or Merrill Creek. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're going to have crappy, crappy division, walleye hybrids, rainbow brown, tiger golden, and a lake trout division, right? Now, now what I'm thinking is have the sport and life – a way station so you could bring the fish there to be weighed in all right yeah then i'm thinking having a way station at say merrill creek i could probably get somebody off the top of my head to be a waymaster there um spruce run have a way way station there set up and then i was thinking about reaching out to maybe Loria at dow's and lakes and marina and seeing you know just like they run the knee deep club contest in a way station see if they would get involved and help out and weigh some fishing for the day as well so that's in the works which i'm thinking about but that'll be pretty pretty sick you know you can pretty much fish any of those big lakes yeah, yeah. I mean, fall fall for that mike 
Uh, I'm I'm really not sure. I'm trying to like the Grand Slam. I was you know I got to think about like when's the best time. You know, a guy could catch a crappy walleye hybrids, the trout, the lake roll at the same time, and kind of you know go from there. Also, the boat traffic at a pack hong. You know, no, gets this crazy. is it. This is it. This is the you know this, this is this tournament is the Round Valley Trollers versus the Merrill Creek Jiggers, and then this, this will settle it once and for all. Yeah, the guys I want to drip bait. I mean, it's it's whatever you want to do. You know, Chris is going to be slaughtered. He has no chance. Are you kidding? No. You think the Round Valley Trollers could get bigger lake trout at Round Absolutely. Valley than you could we jig? We pulled them a twelve pounder and a seventeen pounder out of RV last year. What Merrill Creek that they, they was one yellow dog paddle fish that had eight. it doesn't it doesn't matter you're talking about consistency how many did you see two the whole year i or didn't see years. any at merrill creek nah, no one's gonna pull that those fish the the, the three big fish like that yeah because they don't troll it doesn't matter this contest is just an idea so far you still got to pass it through the board but it sounds it sounds awesome it sounds like a lot of work for you but it does sound awesome yeah, probably probably won't be a lot of payouts. You know, first winner of each division probably you know gets paid sounds, out. It just sounds cool. It's like a like a bragging like a bragging contest. Yeah, get the hey, guys. Let me ask you something though. Seriously, why why not just eliminate the way stations all together and go co total paper tower in the background bunk board on everything? We could we could pick a landmark on 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 every lake that everybody's familiar with and. and do something like that and not even, you know, have a way station or get, you know, deal with getting waymasters because that's always a pain. You know, everybody wants to fish these fun tournaments and nobody wants to help out, unfortunately. So, but, uh, yeah, no, it's it's definitely a thought. I mean, sounds good to me. I mean, we just put something together, run it by the board, see what they think. But, uh, you know, we got we got some good people involved with the club and everybody's pretty much on the same page, you know, so – should I love those two? I love that weekend two bag striper tournament. I love that tournament. Yeah, they're so close. Like, it's just crazy. Like the the first to second, it's 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 crazy. The last the last tournament we had, I can't remember, but uh, I think I me and Eddie almost had Matt, and we lost by a quarter ounce. You know, and and Eddie walked up to Matt at the end of the tournament and gave him a quarter ounce egg sinker and said here this is what this is what you beat me by you know it's, it's crazy it's sick how how close it is it's a nail fight it, it, so at cool. least he didn't pull it out of the fish and then give it to him <laughs> well, yeah. all right, like you got any other surprises left um that's really it um i just got some shout outs and you know i want to want to thank some people and just and also i want to clear up something that was mentioned on the last podcast you had with the guys um okay. So March 18th this year, we stocked 300 browns. They were anywhere from 10 to 11 inches, okay? All those fish were tagged. They all have tags in them. We stocked 13 23 to 24-inch trophy trout, 17 21 to 23-inch trophy trout, all right? So that's like 328 trout in Round Valley swimming around with tags, okay? Yeah. Um, we have a tag trout program which we made that when you catch a trout doesn't matter if it's 10 inches 25 inches um you you scan that qr code and report your harvest basically you know take the tag out of the trout it's up to you whether you want to kill it or let it go the browns are all undersized so they're going to need to be released anyways uh the trophy trout that's that's up to the angler that catches them but report that Scan that QR code, report your harvest, right? And hold on to that tag and bring that tag to the December meeting at Round Valley Trout Association that we have every year. And we're, th we're picking a winner out of that to go fish with Chuck Timon. Uh, that's two guys, you know. And everybody knows Chuck when the stripers he catches. Um, but that's it. But I wanted to clarify it just for catching a 10-inch brown with a tag. You take that tag out of that little 10 inch brown chuck them back and hold on to that and report that and that you're in you don't have to catch a monster trout out of there to to win this trip but right. uh, uh and there's a there's a pretty good amount in there yeah three 328 yeah. tags swimming around out there so I feel like you both you have a good chance of getting one 
but then you also have a good chance of winning because there's not going to be that many people in the drawing at the end of the at the end of it. Yep. But yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, no, I I experienced fishing with with Chuck firsthand, and it's it's insane. You you've never seen this many big stripers in your life. Yeah. Uh, Joe wouldn't know because he bailed on that trip. <laughs> but he got to see. He got to see, uh, you know, my pictures and my Facebook live from uh, from the boat. So, yeah, nah. Listen, and my next thing I was gonna say is support local, man, because these these guys, you know, uh, Lori and Joe at Dow's, you know, Scotty, Bob, Chris, uh, Ryan, and then myself. You know, I'm from time to time at the, the Sporting Life. You know, shop shop these. Shop at these local shops because going to Dick's and Walmart and, you know, all these chain stores. Listen, all these guys, I can't tell you how many times I run into Chuck Timon at the Sporting Life, you know. I know Chris moved down in the area. He's in there quite a few times. But yeah. you, you'll bump into these guys if, you, if you're if you shopping at these stores. And, you know, the guys are awesome. I mean, Chuck Timon, he, I don't I don't think he gets enough credit. He's a, he's a nice guy. Um, he's Very always awesome. He'll, he'll tell you whatever you want, you know. Um, he's, he, will, he's, he will literally tell you exactly what he's doing, whatever you he'll want. He'll tell you want, exactly what he's doing. It. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, support local because you'll run into these guys in these shops and, you know, you might have a lure and say, you know, hey, what do you think of this? Oh, no, get that color, you know. Oh, you want you might want to try one of these. You know, these guys, they're willing, they're, the good guys are willing to, to share the information and help, you know, help you be successful. But, you're not going to get that going to Dick's. You're not going to run into Chuck Diamond at Dick's, you know? So, Dude, I, I can't even get the guy at Dick's to point me in the direction of the right hook. It, it's a disaster over there. Like, the couple yeah. of times that I've had to run in there because I've been in the area and I'm like, ah, I really need these hooks for tomorrow, and you run in there, it's, it's, it's a disaster. They have so much shit, and probably 1% of it is useful. Yeah. And good luck finding it. Yeah, and, you know, the same thing, well, like, the biggest thing is we see at the store, the licenses, you know. People come in for, for a fishing license, and, you know, they got their information's all messed up and stuff, and where'd you go? Oh, I went to Walmart, you know, but then they're in there, and they're they're asking you, you know, you got to fix their license and everything, and then, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll buy a reel. What do you think about this one? What makes that better than that, you know? And then and you're not going to find that information at Dick's, so, you yeah. know. Su support these local guys you know they're all they're dropping like flies and there's not many around you know and they're they're really struggling you know so we all see with the bait situation going on now so that's i just yeah, not good. You know, support these guys you know they need it yeah no i you know i couldn't have said it better myself i, I mean you, you go in there and you talk and you talk to these guys you, you're gonna get you're gonna get like fishing life-changing information mm -hmm. like eventually you're gonna you're gonna even if just like the, there's certain colors of certain lures that if you just got the the right color of a certain lure at a certain time of year on a certain lake it freaking change your fishing life but that's it i just i'm not even exaggerating <laughs> and we're not going to give that information to you here that you have to go and like get it you have to talk to these people you have to be social with them. I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. We, we try to spread that same philosophy. Like, you got to get out there. You got to get out to the local shops. Yeah. All right. So, Mike K's Guide Service, uh, Grand Slam Tournament, July 21st. Got to sign up by the 21st, 4 p.m. at Sporting Life in person. Uh, you can contact Mike at Mike K's Guide Service on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, what else you have, Mike, before we get uh, going? So, what are you, you digging out? Some kind of surprise there? Yeah, we're gonna we're not giving away a free trip. So this is the deal: you go on Mike K Guide Service on the Facebook and the Instagram, and like the page on both, as well as the Sport and Life Bait and Tackle. All right. Okay. And. That's what we're giving away. We're Mojo Bass. All right. That's a Mojo Bass St. Croix fishing rod right there? Mojo Bass St. Croix, 610. All right, medium medium light. What's the rules on me and That's Chris? That's a nice man? rod. 
Can we win that, or Chris, or not? No, Joe, you can't win any of the contests <laughs> that we run through through our podcast. Stop asking. So, can my wife so, win any? Can my wife win? It? Sure. <laughs> well, you said yes. You guys, you guys could sign up. Nah, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Nah, All right, Chris. Chris. All nah, right, Chris. Nah, so, real quick, give them the give the prerequisites right, so, how to win the fishing rod. All right, so. Mike K's Guide Service and Sporting Life Tackle are coming together to give away the St. Croix Bass Mojo Rod. Yep. Yes. All right. Here, so the prerequisites to enter the contest, we're going to ask you to like the Mike K Guide Service Facebook page, the Mike K Guide Service Instagram page. You easily found, easy to find both of them. All right. And we're going to ask you to follow the Sporting Life Instagram page as well. Also easy to find. All right. One more prerequisite. As usual, you got to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Well, that's right here. You could click that right now. That's right. It's the, it's the button right there. Just click it. Yep, there it is. And that's going <laughs> to, besides that being a prerequisite, that's going to let you get a notification when we announce the winner. How long you want to run this contest for? You want to run this contest till the tournament? It's your guys' call. Joe, you want to run it to the tournament, and then you guys could award it? To, to a few days before the tournament, so if they win it, they could use it in the tournament. Whatever you want to do. All right, all right. that's pretty cool. Um, so we're, we're so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a picture of that fishing rod on our Instagram. Right, Mike? Yep. I'm going to post it on the NJ Multi Species Podcast Instagram. All you have to do is comment under it, I'm in, or I tape my balls, like what any comment. Um, when I see your comment there, I will check to make sure you liked all three of my case pages and subscribe to this. I'll respond that you're in. Uh, if I don't respond, you're in. That means you didn't do something you were supposed to do. But it won't happen that quick. Give me a few days to get back to it. <laughs> so make sure. So the the post for this contest we're going to put on the New Jersey Mo NJ Multi Species Podcast Instagram page. That's where we're gonna it's run going it from. to be. Yeah, it'll be a picture of the fishing pole. Right. So even if you're you fell asleep during this podcast and you're not really paying attention right now. You will see a post on the NJ Multispecies podcast Instagram page, and that's, that will be where the contest runs from. It will explain the prerequisites and what you have to do to enter. It will be nice and simple. And, again, that's Mikey Cage Guide Service and Sporting Life Tackle is giving away a St. Croix Bass Mojo fishing rod, real nice rod. So I will spin the wheel for the winner of that rod on Tuesday, July 18th at 8 p.m. Perfect. And we'll we'll update everyone when it gets closer, but uh All right, Mike, you have anybody else you want to plug anything else you want to plug? Um no, not really. Just uh shout out to all the guys on njfishing.com, you know, all the my brothers oh, yeah, over there. It. Mike, you're a what Mike's a moder you're a moderator of njfishing.com, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. NJFishing.com. Old, old school veteran of NJFishing.com. He, he had been on there for years, even when I joined uh, over a decade ago. That's it. I mean, I've been on there. I, you know, I used to run deck for Ronnie on the Fisherman, and, you know, I bought the big topaz, which Chris, you know, came out. We came, went fishing and killed the thresher together. But, uh, you know, oh, yeah. guys, guys knew me as Mikey Topaz. That's that's how yeah. I got my name, fishing with, with those guys, you know, out on the Fisherman. And, that was it. I was Mikey Topaz. So, dude, that that Thresher Shark trip was awesome. I, I should, do we tell that story real quick? It's not that long of a story. Dude, we got lucky on it, but you. You, you can tell it if you want. Yeah, we got time. Can I tell it real quick? Go ahead. Go I don't for get, it. I don't get paid for this. Joe, Joe doesn't want to hear it because that's all he wants to catch right now. Oh, I Joe, do. dude, so we go out. Me, Mike K, uh, Joey X, and uh, Scotty Howard. Just the four of us go out there on Mikey's boat on the on the topaz for going out shark fishing. We just went for it, right? We're going out. We saw a Mako jump, like all the shit. We had the chum slick. We just like we couldn't. Finally, we hook up with this fish, dude. We we all had to rotate through this fish. We didn't know what the hell was on the other line. Like it, it was 
the fight got – I remember the fight started off normal. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I, – I think Joey was on the rod. And all of a sudden he just couldn't handle it anymore. He's just like, this fish is just going. They're like, so what ended up hap- – we're rotating through the rod. You know, what ended up happening is the, the thresher must have – it was hooked in the mouth to begin with, no doubt. Somewhere in the fight, the thing whipped its tail around, ripped the, the line out of its mouth, and rehooked itself in the tail. <laughs> and just literally, and then, like anyone who fishes for big fish, you hook a fish in the tail, <laughs> you lost all your leverage, you lost any advantage you had. Wait, you, you hooked a thresher shark in the tail with no, a circle, not, not originally, I with, know, a, cir- with a circle with hook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This thing must have ripped, must have whipped its big ass tail around. Got the line, pulled the hook out of its mouth, and then rehooked itself in the tail. Because I remember Joey thinking for a split second he lost the fish. Yep. Then all of a sudden he could no longer fight this fish. It was just screaming out, drag, just taking the line with him. And that's when the fight just took forever. We finally get this fish in. I remember it was, it was I was given the job of tail wrapping the thresher shark, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, this thing's gonna whip its tail around and just knock my ass out of the boat. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, how am I going to fucking do this? And thankfully, as it came up, I was just like, oh, you guys had the, you guys had the boomstick ready to go. Like, and I saw the fish, and the fish, and I realized, thankfully, I'm like, dude, it, it's done. Like, we literally basically drowned the fish fighting it backwards, <laughs> yeah. thankfully, because I don't know what the hell I was going to do with the tail rope. And it was easy from there, but man, like, what a what a catch! Like I, I'll put I'll I gotta dig up the picture of all of us with that thresher shark. Yeah, and man, that it was a nice size thread. You remember how big it was? Uh, it really wasn't that big. I, I think it was like three. It really wasn't. I mean, it wasn't like a monstrous. Yeah, no, nah, it was a shark. It was a perfect, it was, perfect it was size. Nice fish. Yeah, and uh, I mean that thing. We you I remember you cut that thing up on the dock, and that thing fed a lot of people, and that, it was delicious. That that thread. If you've never had Thresher Shark, they they're delicious. Yeah. Put it into steaks and throw it on the grill and just sear it and cook it through. And oh man, it's right. really good. Well, we'll save that for Shark Week. <laughs> uh, You're gonna cut that out? Yeah. Nah, no, we don't cut anything out. No, this is unedited, unfortunately. But uh, Mike. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thank you so much for you and the Sporting Life giving the rod away. Uh, and thank you for putting these tournaments on, because if you weren't putting them on, we wouldn't have anything really fun to do. So <laughs> we do appreciate the tournaments. And, no problem. Yeah, Mikey, it, it's real awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, just real quick before you go, because I, I see Kevin Glenn waiting to get on, and I want to torture him as much as possible. Um, I said I was going to – I mentioned your drift boat, and then we didn't get a chance to talk about it. So just real quick, you offer something very unique with your guide service, and that's these drift boat trips with this beautiful boat you you made. You and, you, was it you, your dad, and your brother put together off of a kit of some sort? Yeah. So during COVID at the peak, when you know, when, when everything was shut down and whatnot, um, you know, I'm always looking on, on, on Facebook Marketplace and, and stuff, you know, checking out what's for sale. And, you know, but uh, literally this lady uh, lived a, like two blocks down from me. She says, it's a drift boat kit, Kingfisher. I looked it up and I'm like, this boat's gorgeous, you know, if you, if you had the time and, and, and yeah. took it and did it, you know. And uh, it was 500 bucks. Ran and ran down the street, grabbed it. It was literally a pile of wood. And, uh, you know, me and my dad and my brother, uh, we built it. It took took a little over a year. And, uh, you know, we bought a brand new trailer with a roller on it. So I could pretty much launch this thing wherever I want. As long as there's like a cliff, uh, you know, you clip clip the hook on the front. Yeah. And it literally, it literally winches up with ease up onto the trailer like nothing you ever seen. And, uh, you know, for 500 bucks, it, it was perfect, you know, during... COVID, when everything was shut down, we took our time, we built it, and, you know, just started fishing it this year, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty sick. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's almost too nice to even 
take down some of these rivers, but <laughs> we, I'm not going to lie. I, I put a hole or two in it already, but we, we patched it up yeah, on the bottom. Up, it, that's it. It does look nice to use. It looks too nice to use. Well, yeah. <laughs> I remember thinking the same thing. I'm like, damn, he's going to like, like, where is he going to use that? Like, what if he bounces off? It's going to bounce off some rocks for sure. Yeah. But like, right. uh, you know, people think, oh, I'm going to drift boat fish. You're going upstate New York. But you, I saw um, a couple of weeks ago, you did a guided uh, drift boat trip down, uh, was it the Raritan? So that that wasn't guided. That's just me and uh, a good buddy of mine, Chris Fury. Uh, yeah, I, just, I fished with him with Chuck real much. Oh, that's right. That's right. But uh, yeah, now we just, you know, took the drift boat said, hey, let's see if we could float this stretch, get it down there, whack a couple stripers along the way because we knew they were, where they were sitting in those holes. And, uh, you know, but we, you we made it happen. And, and you people do were, for like a trip like that, if someone wanted a guy to trip like that, you do or you don't? So not down there because that's the title section, but uh, okay. But up above, um, you know, I do, I do a lot of like you know family trips. Me and my dad and brother up up at the Catskills in Roscoe, New York, and you know up there in the Delaware. And uh, my next thing is, I'm going to try to get this in the Passaic River <laughs> and figure out how to do it and float down there. And get some pike in this thing. That's that's like I mean that's what I want to do right now. Bad. As, so as long as you go down far enough where there's actually current that you can drift, I, you'd probably be all right. Well, you could put a motor on this too if you had to. Oh, all right. So I could put the troll motor on the back, and it's also registered. So if I really wanted to, I could put a nine nine on it. Oh, okay. Well, there you so go. All I right. did for that for upstate New York. So like, you know, when a fisher. In the estuary, you know, for the salmon and steelhead and the browns and whatnot up there, you know, I could put take it up there and throw a nine nine on it if, if the okay, river's not okay. producing. So, all right, well, I I, I did scrub a little bit because now people are going to be calling you for drift guided <laughs> drift boat trips, but you could just talk them into one of the other cool trips. So that's that's it. False advertising, Chris. <laughs> Mike, thank you. I don't care. I'm, I'm just at this point. I'm just trying to torture Kevin Glenn because I see him sitting there like. You know, I'm reading on. my text to Kevin Glenn, and it says, "I'm gonna send you the Skype link. Do not click it until I tell you." And he just clicked it immediately as soon as he got it. So no so, one seems to be able to get Skype. Well, going. He deserves this torture that I'm handing him. Yeah, right let now. him sit there. We'll pretend I can't even see him. <laughs> Mike K, thank you for coming on. Thank you for the fishing rod. I hope they're able to figure out how to win it. Um, it's gonna be simple once it goes up on our again. It, once it goes up on our Instagram page, the New Jersey Multi Species Podcast Instagram page, the rules will be very clear and simple. I know we just kind of threw it out there here but that's because we're going to run it off the instagram anyway so just check in uh if you need a rod for the tournament here's a free one you could win <laughs> yeah there you go fish one rod for the tournament all right there i said go. bye to my, mike if you get lucky chris will say bye to you most <laughs> guess he just ignores until the deuce cuts them out i don't i don't ignore the guests i like are, are you gonna say bye to him or not <laughs> Well, that was the joke. I was then going to have Deuce just get rid of him. No, I'm just – uh, dude, we got to get out fishing again. It's been too long. Uh, well, looks like you're doing great with the guy. Service. What? We'll be trolling past each other for 48 straight hours <laughs> in about 13 days. So yeah, you'll you know what? I'll probably have had enough of Joe at that point. I may just, like, suicide dive into your boat just to get away from him. We'll see. We'll see who runs into the shoreline. Not, I'm not going to be on your. You're not going to be on my boat. Oh, I'm not on your team. No, I got. My, well, we're all on a team, but we're on different boats. <laughs> oh my God, we got to get this. We got to get Kevin on here and explain. All right, goodbye, this Mike. Goodbye, bit. Mikey. It was awesome talking to you, Mike. The next part we can't let you hear any of this is <laughs> stuff now. Tournament business. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Mike. You Mikey. got it, guys. Take care, bud. Take care. All right. Go ahead. Bring this asshole in. Kevin, you there? Yeah, thanks for the warm welcome, Chris. Okay. Yeah, Kevin there. Glenn is here. He is the person I have a I, – I have appointed him the sergeant at arms for the tournament for the Mayhem team. Uh, Kevin, kind of break us down on how we're going to do this with boaters, non-boaters, uh, how we're going to hit this for different species – 
All right, well, I have a bone to pick with Mike K. The name of the tournament, the Grand Slam. You've been taught since Little League, you can't go up to bat and swing for the fences to win a game. you got to play small ball. So that's what we're doing with Mayhem. We're breaking this up. One person isn't going to take all five, potentially six, if they want to catch a large mouth and small mouth, and put it under their name. It's not going to happen. If they do, I'll do unthinkable things for them. I'll be so amazed. You've got to get a couple buddies, separate out the boats, target your different fish, different times of day. You're going to have to sleep during the 48 hours. There's no, no way you don't sleep. I don't have to. I, I so mean, I'm going to call you out on that after the tournament because I will find a picture or proof that you're sleeping. Chris. I live too far away. If someone lets me like rest on the couch, I'll take a nap. I've that. already offered up my house 20 minutes away, and I told you I'm going to be sleeping in a tent on the side of Spruce Run. You can't just put tents up and sleep where you want. It's not a hobo fest. It's a. It, this isn't Woodstock. It's a fish. Yeah, I, I actually don't think you can legally just pitch a tent wherever you want. Okay, we, one. I can pitch a tent wherever I want to pitch a tent. You're the Mike, weird one for looking, Chris. We should have asked Mike. Hey, are you allowed to put up like home structures near the fishing tournament, Mike, where I could just live? For this the, guy's going to set up a hobo camp on the side of the lake. He's, he's not setting up a hobo camp. He has hobo camps everywhere already. They're already there. He has camps. You drive by them day. every day, Chris. Where there's fish, I have a hobo camp. Uh, okay, okay. So now keep in mind, Joe has told me none of this. I have no idea what's going on. So you're saying... Because that, your boat only fits two people, and it's you and Katie. You're useless to us. We can't put anyone in. I'm taking Max... I have room for one more. Kevin might have room for a few. Ed what Hutter might have room for I've got for room for one more. If you are a member of Mayhem and want to fish this tournament and do not have a boat, contact us. We need fishermen and fisher girls. But what? So what is the point of this? You're just assigning people to specific aspects of this tournament we're not and assigning we'll, it. Basically, I'm going like I'm going to concentrate on rainbow trout and hybrids. That's what I'm doing for the whole weekend. So because yeah. I'm on your team, I can't fish for either of those two fish. You could you could do anything you want. Kevin's going to do something different. You're going to go do whatever you want. Whatever. But what, we, so if I'm if I'm on you if I'm on your team in quotes what like what does that do for me? Are we going to split the money? What I don't get it. No, it's just team mayhem. We're all members of mayhem, and we're just going to try to get on the board. You know what? I mean, like Chris, Mike if I were... Mike K is on mayhem too. But... Who? Who? Mike K, the guy running the contest that he just had on a gift. Are you okay. feeling all right? If he calls Kevin and wants to be on our team, that's up to him. I don't care. He's, I'm saying he's, in, he's in the Mayhem group. That doesn't automatically make him a, a part of the Mayhem team? Ah, it's a good question. All right, Kevin, answer that question. Chris, now let's go back and assume I'm not the most skilled angler in New Jersey like you are, and okay. there is something for me to benefit from fishing with other guys from Mayhem. If you okay. reach out to us and you want to get on one of our boats, we need extra hands for rods. We don't necessarily need the best person at jigging a lake trout in New Jersey. If you come out and spend 48 hours with us, you're going to learn stuff. If you have a boat and you already know stuff, even better. I mean, I know I have nothing I could possibly teach you about fishing in New Jersey. I'm sure of that, Chris. I mean, you 100% could teach me something about fashion, though. I mean, setting up a hobo camp? Yes, you could definitely learn a thing or two. But I was also smart enough. Fishing. Dude, I you was, look, for you the record, look, you look like you blasted out of a 4th of July firework. It looks freaking awesome. Where'd you get that shirt? Well, if you weren't out gallivanting up in upstate New York, this episode would have been shot on the 4th of July. So That's true. It is late. Yeah, of- I was, I was back. Oh, no, it's late because of Mike K. Priorities, Chris priorities no you're not blaming me for that i was back all right so bottom line if you don't have a boat or you don't know what you're doing but you want to fish this tournament with us on team mayhem you can contact me chris or kevin glenn we can try to get you on one of the boats we have room on if you sign up for the tournament 
like like basically like Kevin saying, if I go troll around Valley and run 14 rods, I'm going to need help. Uh, you don't have to necessarily know what you're doing. You just, I need a set of hands. I won't have Chris. I won't have Kevin. I won't have anyone because everyone's going to be on their own boat. So we need people. We need crew men. Team players, not like Chris. He's already like counting the money for himself and making sure he doesn't have to share it. Um, <laughs> he's like, I, I just wanted like, an explanation of what the hell you guys are talking about. It makes a little bit more sense. I think now. that's why we kept you out of this, and we don't even really want you involved in it anyway. So just take your boat and go do whatever oh, you want. If you don't have me on on your team, then I'm going to like. Well, we have walking to attack every category that I know you're trying for. All the boats that are involved in this have walkie talkies with a secret channel, and you don't know the channel, so you'll. So then I'm your enemy. You'll be hearing nothing. Then I'm your enemy. I'm coming after everything that you hope to do. You'll lose. I maybe you're gonna troll lures against my bait, and you're gonna lose. No shot. Oh, I could I could troll lures against your bait and and just no. There's no you don't know what you're talking about. You no know? chance in hell. Okay. I told I told you for years. I've done it. I've done it side by side. What do you think, Kevin? I think you're just gonna be real embarrassed when I sit on the side of Spruce Run with live bait. Not necessarily live bait, but some stinky bait and just Outfish the shit out of you for those hybrids. You're going to put a ton of effort, a ton of rigging into catching them, and I'm going to sit around and do nothing. You can't outfish me, though, because I'm on your team. You could outfish Chris. He's the enemy. Well, I'm going to outfish both of you, but it's going to be sweeter to outfish Chris. Well, so, so the team is falling apart right before your eyes. Suddenly, Kevin doesn't even have a boat anymore. He's on shore already. With his, he's just... Every fucking conversation you have with this guy ends with chicken livers. Like, I could talk, be talking to him about my mom's birthday. He ends up talking about chicken livers and a hobo camp somewhere. It's always the same shit. Anyway, uh, this episode's been extremely too long already. Chris doesn't seem to care about winning this as a team. He's just going to selfishly try to do it himself. And that's you the way it's going to be. Team. Excuse me? You kicked me off the team. Yeah, I did. Uh, so if you do want to fish with us, uh, call Kevin. But you do have to go to Sporting Life and register yourself. No one could do that for you. I bet and you Kevin would do it for you if you asked him real nicely. And you're not time. allowed to. You have to sign a waiver in person. So you oh. can't. I already tried that. Yep, tried oh. that. Yeah, I tried that. Uh, you, other you than that. offering Kevin something special to get him to do week, that for you? Next week's episode, we're having the. 20 bucks is 20 bucks, Chris. Next week's episode, we're having the members of, or member, or leader, president of Muskies and NJ. It's a muskie fishing club. Uh, Mike K. just offered up a real nice St. Croix rod. You literally have to click on, uh, you have to click on four things and write one word to win a St. Croix. If you can't do that, you should just be disgraced with yourself. Uh, remember to hit the subscribe button. Uh, and that's it, Chris. I have nothing left. Kevin, contact Kevin if you want to fish uh, chicken livers from shore at a hobo camp. Anything from you, Chris? Uh, I don't think I have anything to add. Uh, like Joe said, big thanks to Mikey K and Sporting Life for uh, doing the rod giveaway. All the info will be on the Instagram. Uh, Kevin, thanks for coming on, I guess. Uh, sorry I, I tortured you. I, I got one more thing for you guys. What? July 16th. If you've never fished Lake Parsippany before, I'm hosting a carp tournament. Carp and catfish, biggest single fish, is going to win all the prize money for that. It is a private lake with excellent bass fishing. So you could also pay to enter the tournament and then just spend the entire day bass fishing. It's worth the 25 bucks to get on there. So reach out to me if you have any interest in participating in that carp and catfish tournament. Or just spending the day fishing on a private lake. What's the date of that? July 16th. And I'm going to post the poster for that on multi-species. Okay. All right. And then uh, I guess Joe will... Joe, are you going to send the bill to Lake Parsippany for uh, the promo? 
I think he owns it. Oh, we'll sell, we'll send the bill directly to you, Kevin. Sounds good. And you can you can pay it off with your winnings from the Hobo once, Camp Striper. Wait until once tax again, season to cash that check. All right, once again, real quick, you have 24 hours left to go to episode 15 and hit subscribe, comment on the Eddie Mac episode. That wheel's going to spin Friday night. You can win the St. Croix by following the Sporting Life on Instagram, Mike K's Guide Service on Instagram, Mike K's Guide Service on Facebook, and subscribing to this podcast. And then you can just comment underneath the picture of the rod on our Instagram, and we will verify you're entered. Um, Other than that, like we said, if you want to fish the tournament and do not have a boat or do not know what you're doing and would like to fish with members of Mayhem, please contact any of the three of us. Uh, That's it for tonight. We'll be back next week with the musky guys. Um, We'll have to be extra sensitive, Chris, this week, like listen to softcore music and stuff because of all the fishing classes. I know these musky guys get the most butt hurt of anyone. So we're going to have to, like, turn ourselves into real sensitive people. Nah, you know what? I, I think these guys are coming on to kind of clear up a little bit of that that uh, that that BS that you hear. But, well, yeah, we'll see. It's pretty much musky fisherman versus uh, fly fisherman for the sandiest vaginas around. But we'll figure yeah. that out next week. Aren't you a fly fisherman? I am, yes. I'm a total bitch, too. So, so are the musky guys. So, I'm a perfect person yep. to argue with them. All right. Kevin, thank you so much for coming on. Um, we will see you on the lake for the tournament with your energy drinks and methamphetamine and everything else you're going to do to stay awake. Um, Chris, I'll see you later. All right. Kevin, take care. Bring me one of those shirts for the tournament. And Mike yeah. Kay said I can enter to win the rod, so I will be entered. Go go for it, Joe. I'm gone. All right. Take care, guys.